Hello mate and welcome to Introduction to Rempire Part 5. In this episode we're going to be looking at describing screens and their uses, we're going to describe basic screen elements and we're going to demonstrate how to use screen elements to place displayables on the screen. So what is a screen? Screens are used to display user interface elements. Screens can be as simple as a single image. They allow you to place items on the screen using containers like CSS. Screens can be nested within other screens using the use statement. What is a return? A screen can be used to return a value similar to Python functions. This is done by setting a variable to the value of the called screen. When the screen receives an interaction, i.e. the mouse is clicked on a button or a text button or an element within the screen which returns a value, the screen will then pass that value back to the statement that called it into the variable that was used. Screen language differs from a standard RemPy and it allows functionality such as for each loops without the need for a Python block. So looking at some of the elements within the screens that are already predefined in RemPy, we can find out quite a lot of things. Firstly, in order to define a screen, all you have to do is type the word screen and then give it a name and then add a set of parentheses followed by a colon. The parentheses allow you to pass values into the screen if you wish to. However, for now, we will just add the parentheses. We will go through screen language in more depth in later episodes, so we will involve things like passing values in. Z order allows us to layer our screens in whatever order we want. The higher the number, the closer to the player the screen will be. So something with a Z order of zero will play, be placed behind something with a Z order of one and so on. Next thing we have here is an if statement. We're going to ignore that for now and we'll come to hbox. hbox is a type of container that we can use in a screen which places all the elements within it in horizontal order. So for example we could have a box on the left hand side followed by a box to the right of it followed by another box to the right of that. That's how our quick menu is created. As you can see it's just a series of text buttons which are placed one after the other horizontally. You'll notice that we also have two other properties within our hbox. We have an x align and we have a y align. Now you'll notice that x align is 0.5. What that statement means is that this element, this hbox, will be placed halfway across the screen, 0.5% or 0.5 of the way across the screen. Y align is that it's going to be placed at the very bottom of the screen, all the way down, 1.0. So you can use these values to change where that screen is going to appear simpler by working out what percentage of the screen you want to be across and then putting that value in this number here or this number here. Style prefixes we're going to talk about in the next video in the series so don't worry about that too much but as you can see text button it's got text in it and then it has an action and the action in this case is to roll back and this one is to show this the history screen and so on. If we look at our choice screen, which is the screen that shows whenever we open a menu in RemPy, we can see that it's a really, really simple screen. It only consists of actually five lines of code. The name, the definition, screen choice items. Now items that's passed into this screen is actually a tuple it's which contains the caption and the action. And all we have inside the screen is a V-box, a vertical box, which means the elements within it are placed one after the other vertically. Then we go into a loop for I in items. So what we're saying to RemPy is for every element within or for every tuple within this value here that's been passed in items, we're going to do this. We're going to create a text button which, which places the text on the screen in the form of the caption. And then the action is whatever the action is that we're being told to do. So we can go into that in a little bit more depth in another screen as well. But suffice to say that we're just demonstrating how simple screens can be. All we've got here for the entirety of the choice menu screen, whenever you type in the command menu in your game and you add values to it, you can see it's really simple. It's not difficult at all. When we look at our say screen, you can see that we're actually now having two properties passed in. And we've got another style prefix, which we're going to ignore for now. 
and then we're opening a window which has the ID of window. The next thing we're looking at is if who is not none. And what we're checking here is that this value is not none. And it can be none because if you remember from when we place text on the screen, we don't actually have to put a character saying it. We can just input dialogue. And this is the screen that's going to display that dialogue. So if we just put text on the screen in speech bubbles and we don't actually declare who's saying it, we need a way of displaying that text without the nameplate. So what we've got here is it's only going to show us the name box if that value is not none. If it's none, then we're going to skip over that. And all we're doing is we're opening a new window called name box. We're applying the style name box to it. And then we're putting text in there with the ID of who. Then we're going to display the text of the what, which is the dialogue that we've output. And that is going to have an ID of what. And then you can see that there's some other parameters here if that's a mobile phone variant of the game. And then there's a bunch of styles below that which are assigned to these values in here. So in order to demonstrate how simple screens can be, we're just going to very quickly whip one up. So we're going to use the word screen. If you remember, that's the way that we define the screen. And then we're just going to give this a name. We're going to call it test screen and some parentheses and then a colon. Now, once we're here, we have various options. But what the first thing I would recommend doing is try playing with frames. We use frame. We declare it with the word frame and then we put colon after it. And then we can apply a bunch of properties to that, such as X align. Now, if you remember what that one means, that's where the frame is going to appear on the X axis. So say 0.5 Y align. Again, that defines where it's going to appear on the Y axis. And we say 0.5 0.5. That means that our screen is going to appear in the center of the screen. Next thing we can do is define its size. So we can say X size is going to be 500 and Y size is going to be 500 as well. Let's say for argument's sake. Now the frame automatically uses the background from the GUI folder and you can change that. So let's say we don't want a background. So we can say background none like so, but you could put a file extension there you could say you know like uh, images forward slash background dot jpeg or whatever this is just a quick way of replacing that background now notice that if you just do it this way the image that you place in the background will be stretched and scaled to fit the frame there are methods that we can use to prevent that from happening and we'll go over that in a later video but for now just know that if you use a custom background you're going to have to make sure that it's resolution fits the size of the frame that you're calling. Otherwise, it's going to look all kinds of weird. Other things that we can do, we can change the padding values, which is how many pixels the window has around the edge that doesn't allow text in it. So we could say sort of 20 comma 20. That is uh, 20 pixels either side and 20 from the top and bottom. And then within that frame, we can put a V box, which is, as you recall, the container which places all of its contents in order vertically. So we could just have text saying hi, and then we can have more text saying bye, and then we can have more text saying why, and so on. And as you can see though, that text will just appear in order vertically. And then let's say we wanted to uh, change that so we could have a V box and we, inside the V box, we could have an H box like so. And then we can place all of those items within the H box, which means it's going to be higher by Y in a horizontal order. And then we can have another H box below that one. And that will just have text saying, see ya. Oops, a daisy. And then another line of text saying, wouldn't wanna be uh, and what will happen now is you'll see the text will be high by Y in a line vertically and then directly below that will be another line of text saying see it wouldn't want to be you and it's really simple how to lay out these elements in the screen and I strongly recommend that you have a go give it a try in your script file you can really simply call this screen by just saying you know, that there go into our script RPY and we can just say call screen 
test screen and then when we run our code as you can see hi by why see you wouldn't want to be here but because we've limited the box's size the text has had to wrap around and you'll also notice that currently because we don't have any spacing set there the elements all appear smack bang next to each other we can change that if we come back to our test screen so we can come back in here and we're going to just change the size of the screen to remove the wrapping and then what we have to do is put spaces in there so that it's not all appearing in the same line like that and then as you can see we've got space at the beginning of that so when we save and run that what you can see now is we've got a nice space there but our text is still wrapping a little bit and that's because we adjusted the x size but not the y size sorry the y size not the x size so if we readjust that and then look in our screen as you can see now the text wrapping is gone and that's the really really simple way of doing this let's say if i commented out the background num and then saved my file reran it now you can see the size of the frame because it has the border of the default rempi frame there and i can adjust that obviously what i can do if i don't want the screen the, the window to be a fixed size in the y direction i can just comment that out save it and then run it and now you can see that the text box or the box the frame is only as big as required to fit the text that we've put in there in there like that that about wraps it up for this episode guys thanks ever so much for watching let me know what you think in the comments below and i will see you in the next one but until then you take damn good care of yourselves all right bye bye